I'm confused. I I think there is something strange going on. Like what a what an odd time for us to be alive, you know, in all of human history. What an odd time for us to be having this conversation right now. What an odd time indeed. A company you probably only started hearing about two or three years ago is now the most valuable private company in history. And they're only getting bigger. GBT5 Pro keeps making new discoveries almost daily now. And this week, we even saw the unveiling of a massive spider-like robot named Charlotte, built to 3D print entire buildings autonomously. So yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so OpenAI has officially crossed the half trillion dollar mark after selling another $6.6 .6 billion in private stock. That makes it the most valuable private company on Earth, ahead of SpaceX, ByteDance, and, well, everyone else that's ever existed. Their revenue is also growing substantially, as reported by the information, they've already generated $4.3 billion this year, 16% more than their entire revenue last year. They are burning through a ton of money though, not just on R&D, but also mainly on infrastructure. And so it's still going to be a while before OpenAI is actually profitable. But I mean, their goal isn't necessarily to be profitable anyway. They're still very much in the scaling phase. And that's pretty clear with the deals they've been making recently. Just this week, OpenAI signed a massive multi-year chip partnership with AMD, causing AMD stock to soar 30%. As part of the deal, OpenAI will deploy 6 gigawatts of AMD's new Instinct GPUs over multiple years and across multiple generations of hardware. And here's the wild part. OpenAI could even end up taking a 10% stake in AMD itself. So this is a pretty massive deal for both companies. And it comes just a week after OpenAI's 10 gigawatt partnership deal with Nvidia, which is an even bigger deal. These numbers are just ridiculous. 10 gigawatts is roughly the same power output as 10 nuclear reactors. I don't know how they're going to power all this, but what I do know is that the models we have right now are probably going to look laughable next to what comes out in 2027 or 2028. And we're already starting to see glimpses of that future. GBT5 Pro apparently solved yet another unsolved math problem this week. I have no idea how to even validate this, but as OpenAI researcher Sebastian Bubeck put it, I guess it's now every day until the end of time. There was even another example. Mathematician Bartos Naskreki said GBT5 Pro solved a long-standing math problem known as Yu Sumura's 554th problem, completely from scratch in just 15 minutes and without using the internet. He claims it's the first model to ever do it. And again, I obviously can't validate this myself, but the fact we're hearing these kinds of claims from actual experts now is definitely something new. And Sam Altman also believes we're about to see a lot more of this. In a recent interview, he talked about how the thing he's most excited for over the next five years is AI systems like ChatGPT making brand new scientific discoveries. Check this out. I mean, 10 years down the road is a long time. Like, you know, wait, we're, we're not even okay, 10 years old five yet. Years. Uh, but I mean, what is the, I wouldn't call it an end game because there's never an end game, mostly or always game. Uh, development. But but what is the the boldest division? You uh, but the boldest vision that you that you could imagine for that company? There's never an end game. There is a smoothly rising exponential. Right. But uh, the you know, in five years, I really do hope we're in deep, not deep. We're somewhat into this world of AI discovering new science, where AI is being used to cure disease, to invent new materials, to fully understand physics. And I, I, am a, I am a true believer in the idea that all or almost all real sustainable human progress comes from discovery of new science and then how we apply that to the economy and society. And for the first time ever with GPT-5, we are finally beginning to deliver on that promise in small ways. But you see these reports online of scientists using AI to make new discoveries and it's blowing their minds and I'm just so excited. So I hope over the next five years, we could really get into that phase. And right on cue, a new startup called Periodic Labs launched this week. And their goal is literally to build an AI scientist. 
They're creating systems that can form hypotheses, run physical experiments, and learn directly from the results, all inside autonomous laboratories. Basically, instead of training on internet data, these models generate their own data by experimenting with the real world. They're starting with physics and material science, trying to design things like next generation superconductors. But the long-term goal is much bigger, automating the scientific process itself. And they're not just some random startup either. They've got former OpenAI and DeepMind researchers on the team, plus massive financial backing from A16Z, NVIDIA, Jeff Bezos, Eric Schmidt, and a ton of other big names. So yeah, a lot of bets are being placed right now on AI systems actually being able to make real scientific discoveries. Do you guys think this is the right time? Or are we still a long ways away from that being reality? Obviously, it's hard to predict, but with all these GPT-5 Pro claims popping up lately, it's starting to feel like we might actually be closer than anyone expected. Now, in other AI news, Thinking Machines Lab, the new company started by former OpenAI CTO Mira Murati, finally unveiled their first product, called Tinker. They describe it as a flexible API for fine-tuning language models. Basically, it lets researchers and hackers customize models however they want, giving them full control over the algorithms and data, while Thinking Machines handles the heavy lifting behind the scenes, the complexity of distributed training, scaling, and compute management. You can fine-tune everything from small models to huge ones like Quen 235B, just by changing a single line of code. And it's not generally available just yet, but they've already got early testers at Stanford, Berkeley, and Princeton using it for math, chemistry, and RL experiments, which is pretty wild. So we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on this company. They already have an insane valuation of 12 billion, and of course, a lot of talent from OpenAI. So we can likely expect some pretty ambitious stuff from them over the next few years. Speaking of ambitious, Elon Musk said this week that the XAI game studio will release a fully AI-generated video game by the end of next year. He even clarified that it'll be a great AI-generated video game. Now again, that might sound ambitious, but after what we saw last week from OpenAI's new video generator, Sora 2, it honestly sounds conservative, if anything. I mean, the only things really missing at this point are duration and full recursion, models that can sustain storylines and also keep a consistent environment. And that's coming, as the world models powering these video generators keep getting bigger and better. And these world models, these digital simulations of the real world, they're not just going to make AI video models better, they're also going to push robotics to a whole new level. From self-driving cars, to humanoids, to literal spider-like robots like this one. This week, for example, a Sydney-based startup called Crest Robotics unveiled Charlotte, a massive, eight-legged robot designed to 3D print entire buildings completely autonomously, using raw materials it processes on-site. This thing is literally designed to build homes in space. So yeah, from GPT-5 discovering new math, to AI scientists, to robots that can 3D print houses on the moon, what an absolutely insane time to be alive. Anyway, that's all for this week's AI recap. Drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.